Hey guys, it's Damien again from Marketing Food Online Podcast. Uh, this episode, I want to delve into the topic of utilizing a co-packer and what is a co-packer and what exactly do they do and how can I leverage one to create a food product for me and do all that work uh, bringing together the product and then shipping it either to market or handling the logistics on the uh, the end once they have produced the product. Can they ship it to FBA for me? Can they produce the product, package it, and get it into Amazon's hands or even ship it to retailers, uh, the companies you do business with? And, and at what point what point does a co-packer actually make sense for your product? Is it something I should do right off the bat? Or should I establish the product myself in small markets, possibly even on e-commerce, and then move in the direction of bringing on board a co-packer? And, and what are the expenses that are involved that you would incur utilizing a co-packer? So really interesting topic, um, especially if you are starting out with a, a food idea or food business um, and you want to produce a massive amounts of product. But maybe you don't actually have a commercial kitchen. Uh, maybe you have a process that you've established to make a product. You have a great idea for packaging, uh, but you are doing it from home and you're doing it locally, right? And and this is how a lot of food businesses get started. Actually, this is how a lot of businesses, period, get started is is from home. But the the, the tricky thing is when you're dealing with food is that there are limitations in some states. There's a lot of regulations and guidelines that must be followed, which falls under the cottage food laws. Um, and it kind of can be uh, constraining when you're trying to gain momentum and start your business uh, to get it up to the next level. Uh, producing hundreds, maybe even thousands of units of product. So um, how can you do that? So here is how a co-packer works. Number one, a co-packer is a company that will manufacture your food product. They bring together the ingredients, whatever the process is to mix those ingredients to create a final product, right? And then package it in whatever the packaging may be. And that could vary from maybe even glass bottles for like a barbecue sauce to plastic bags for a trail mix um, or some dry nuts or something to that effect. And then do they do, uh, from there, do they do the labeling? Do they do the actual, the, the labels or produce the bags or packaging as well? Well, in some cases they do, in some cases they don't. Um, this is where finding the right co-packer can be a bit of a challenge at first, uh, but he, they are definitely out there. Uh, it's going to be dependent upon the type of product that you're making. Every co-packer, uh, does not manufacture the same stuff, okay? The way it works is that most facilities uh, for co-packers are set up to create a product within a certain product category. So, for instance, if you approached a co-packer who is a producer of ketchup, okay, or they produce sauces or condiments like mustards and things, they're not going to be, there's a 99% chance they're not going to be the producer to approach if you've got a, a great idea for a new potato chip, Okay. Their facilities are set up and established with certain types of equipment that will allow them to produce certain types of products. It's it's kind of how they are, and it's it's how the industry is set up. Now, there's a lot of of each state has a variety of different co-packers, um, and not necessarily in every state will you find a co-packer that's going to meet your needs. And that's where you have to approach a co-packer who could be in another state or even across the country. Um, it can, I'm not going to say it's going to be trickier or, or it's going to be more challenging to work with one, but my own, uh, two cents, my own opinion is I would recommend that you find one as close to you as possible. Um, if you've got one within your state, that's great. And if you end up finding one within a certain town or a certain city where you live, that's even better. Um, and the reason why is that you want to build a relationship with the co-packer. Okay. Uh, the co-packer can be a hugely uh, useful resource uh, to um, catapulting your brand and your product on the market and allowing you to produce such a quantity that you can get them into more customers' hands and then, you know th that in turn gets traffic to your website, um, more sales from your website because then customers can buy direct. You know, There's a lot of advantages. Your social media can explode and, and can expand. Once more customers have your product, okay, it's kind of a kind of a common sense denominator, if you will. More more and more people that know about you buy your product, you know, the better off you are. So, so do co-packers do everything for you? Um, it's really dependent upon the co-packer. Uh, once you find one, 
uh, that you approach, you want to ask a handful of questions. So what type of questions do you want to ask? Well, number one, right off the bat, do they package? Can they produce and package the type of product that you make? Okay. Um, and back to what I said at the beginning is they may or may not. And if they don't, there may be some that since they are in the industry, they may say, you know what? Hey, Bill, um, you know, we don't make that, but I know a company who does and they'll give you some contact information. So you, you may have to call around. You may end up calling or trying to track down between 10 to 12 or a dozen different companies till you find maybe one or two that work good for you. So once you do that, well, how do they bring your product together? How do they do it? Well, there's two ways. Some co-packers will source the product ingredients. Um, you can give them the information. and They can do all of that work for you and bring together the products into their facility for them to mix it and kind of make it in a sense and then package it or bottle it um, and then distribute it or send it out or ship it on that end. Um, some of them will say, you know what, Bill, I need you to just uh, figure out whatever your ingredients are, ship it. Here's our, our main address. Ship it to our facility. Um, you need to give us the instruction. You know, tell us how is it, how is it made. How is it made and how is it mixed? Um, and then from there, you can have it put together for you, okay? And then it'll be packaged and, and bottled and then uh, shipped out. So, so then what you'll do then is you'll have the facility bring those items together. And again, it's based upon the kind of contract you want to work out with them if that's something that they offer. Because again, not every facility will offer that service. Um, some of them are very uh, advanced facilities, and they actually can do everything for you. Of course, it's going to cost uh, additionally to do that. And the cost to do this, by the way, is not, I won't be able to give you on this podcast. <laughs> I can't give you an exact pricing for a certain type of product because, honestly, every facility sets those costs um, and it depends on the features that they offer, such as some of them actually do. If you don't have a logo or design, they even have graphic design departments to do that for you. Um, if your bag is not a pre-printed bag where you've actually got the logo and the insignia and everything printed and pressed within the bag, and you're actually having a label placed on the front of the bag or the bottle, whatever the packaging is, um, that may be extra, it may be less. Um, some facilities actually have the, the capabilities to do that too where they can imprint on the bag and do all of that. So literally, you just come to them and say, look, I've created this sauce. It's got six ingredients. I can source that stuff and have it shipped to your facility. This is the process that we use to make it, um, and here's my logo, and I need 10,000 of them produced. So in a lot of instances, uh, you can have that type of, uh, you want to say almost like an order put in, um, at the facility and they will take care of it and they'll tell you the turnaround times. So when you, what are the, some of the questions you want to ask a co-packer? Uh, number one, ask them, uh, obviously if they make the product that you, you are wanting to do. And if they do, that's great. Uh, the second thing you want to do is ask them about some references before you really kind of sign the dotted line. If you will, you want to touch base with some companies that they've done business with. Um, you know, do they meet the turnaround times that, that they say they have? You know, if they say, hey, I'm going to take two weeks to produce 10,000 bottles of this, um, are they meeting that criteria? You know, are some of the clients that they've used, hey, you know, this this company's great, but they didn't meet the, the requirement, the deadline. And um, kind of delve into, kind of dig into their, their history and find out before you start doing this and you sign something, uh, with a co-packer, speak to some of the clients that they work with. And if you meet a company that's, you know, they're, they're not willing to give you referrals and stuff, I would just say take a hike. Just I would walk away instantly. There's plenty of co-packers out there who are legitimate companies who stand by what they do. Um, and you'll be able to find clients that will be happy to. They'll say, look, you know what, here's three of them. Feel free to contact them. It's not a problem. Um, or find out what companies they, they do business with. Um, you got to understand something that there's a lot of very large co-packing companies around the U.S. that have dealt with big companies, big grocery chains. Believe it or not, like the Walmarts of the world, the Kroger's, uh, Publix here in the southeast, uh, Wagmans up in the northeast. Um, these types of companies have private label products, and they normally don't own the facility that produces their private labeling. They contract that out. So there's a lot of big name uh, co-packers out there who dealt with some big name companies. Now, whether or not they will specifically do business with you, that's again, I, I couldn't tell you yes or no, because I can't speak on, on behalf of those facilities. 
but there's a lot of them that are willing to to do small runs of stuff too that they don't necessarily have to have 50,000 or 100,000 units and that's something that's like it's it's kind of a an emerging market right now is that there's a lot of co-packing companies that are starting up that are seeing the opportunity with smaller food niche products okay and that you know if you're a food producer and you're just getting started maybe you only need about 500 uh, a run of 500 units maybe 1000 at the most you know a lot of co-packers who have been around for years or even decades, they're producing fifty or 60,000 units a week. You know, these are big, big runs for big, big companies. So obviously that's not what you do. You're a small niche product. You're just starting. So smaller companies that can produce private label products and meet the criteria of a, of a smaller run, they're, they're becoming um, uh, definitely a new industry that's popping up. Uh, with that, uh, my wife and I are actually in the process of of working out the the capacity to do because uh, we're into snacks and candies. We're going to be offering private labeling soon, where uh, we can produce products for uh, even you, our listeners, uh, on YouTube. I actually have a channel where I discuss that, and that's something that's still in the works. And we're in the process of kind of finalizing um, when we can get that up and running. But we want to offer that too, uh, because many food producers, uh, you know, food companies, when you're starting from your home, if you will, you know, you're not in the position to be putting out 50, 60 grand for uh, 20,000 bags of something. So maybe you only need a few hundred. So that's something that we want to tap into and kind of create. Uh, so we're in the process of doing so to wrap up this podcast really quick. Um, that's kind of the criteria, what you want to look for um, when you, when you have a co-packer and just remember that when you're sitting down at the table, or if you're discussing a contract with a co-packer, Try to understand that you uh, a lot of times co-packers have a certain uh, production uh, process, okay? But uh, nothing's in stone. Nothing's ever in stone until everything is signed and done. If you come to them and you've got certain criteria that you want met, you know, you, you, you want to ask them about certain criteria and you want that included in, in your contract, you need to tell that to the co-packer. You know, bring it up and say, look, is this something you're flexible on? Is that something you're flexible on? If, if you don't meet your, your uh, expected window in time, is there a discount for it or, or is there um, a minimum run? Can we do just a basic small run? What are your minimums as opposed to these very large runs? And um, kind of brainstorm because every scenario and every situation is different. So I, I couldn't sit here and tell you exactly if you're making a salsa, I couldn't tell you exactly what the criteria would be for salsa because I don't make that. But if you're in the position to do that and that's the type of product you want to make, sit down with the co-packer, you know, kind of pick their brain a little bit and figure out what, what's going to work for you. A lot of them are flexible. Um, uh, a lot of the, there's a handful of, of things that they do in the process of producing the product that's in stone, um, but not every part of it or every aspect of the contract will be. So you want to kind of keep that in mind and kind of just play with it and figure out what's going to work for you. And the other reason why I was mentioning about finding a co-packer that's closer to you um, is that if there happens to be a problem that arises or um, if you can go to the facility and you can see how it works and how it runs, and then because that's an important aspect of the process to make a food product is the, is the actual processing, you know, the putting it together. So if they're not actually making it the way that you were looking to make it, um, you may want to look at a different uh, co-packer, okay? So finding one that's close by, obviously, if you're in New York and you have to fly to California constantly because that's the only co-packer you found, you know, you're having to go back and forth physically, and it's just it becomes a very expensive endeavor. So, all right, with that being said, I do want to want to wrap it up. I want to keep my podcast straight into the point. I don't want to ramble on too long. Um, if you've got any, any information or questions regarding co-packing, uh, please do let me know. Uh, like I say in all my podcasts, I'm o- open for uh, uh, responding to questions and inquiries. So it's marketingfoodonline at yahoo.com. And you can email me um, any time of the day. And uh, I'm on that email every single day. And I will get back with you as soon as I can. If you're looking for much more information, you want to work with me directly. I do have a consulting, a line of products, actually, um, that will fit anyone's budget. If you were looking to do consulting with me, I have actually an email consulting program. Um, I also have a one-on-one uh, phone call, one hour lots of time uh, that I sell off. And that is $35 an hour. And I do have a handful of other Uh, monthly or bi-monthly programs as well and that can be found on my Shopify store and I'll put some information um, in the description of this podcast uh, to let you know where you can find out more about that and again check out my YouTube channel and uh, subscribe I've got hundreds of videos there so I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to listen to me and I look forward to touching base with you on my next podcast thank you guys have a great day